Thank you for joining us. I'm Venkat Pulsani, Chief of Cardiovascular Imaging COE at Piedmont Heart Institute. And with me here today is my colleague Vibhav Rangarajan, uh, Advanced Imager at Piedmont Heart Institute. We would like to um, discuss a few cases. Uh, we are in tough times right now, and we want to sh give a shout out to the, all the frontline workers who are doing the hard work to get us through the pandemic. Uh, but you know, we would like to discuss three clinical scenarios using advanced imaging, cardiovascular advanced imaging, that would have been done differently in normal situations, but we're in a tough pandemic situation where there is decreased availability of personal protective equipment, and there is increased risk of aerosolizing procedures. So uh, we would like to discuss three scenarios here. One of them is a case of myocarditis, and there is a pair of cases of endocarditis, and there is a case with left atrial appendage thrombus. Why don't we get started? Vibha, we're going to start discussing the first case. We would like to discuss a brief case that we came across. I actually was involved in the care of this patient, Vibha, and uh, I was rounding, and there's a 54-year-old lady. She was admitted to um, uh, with symptoms of nausea, diarrhea, and subjective fevers, and she was admitted as a per person under investigation. And uh, she, her initial EKG was fine, and she had a troponin of peak that 0.4, and she also complained of chest pain, but her main symptoms were more nausea, diarrhea, and subjective fevers. She ended up having a CT of chest, abdomen, and pelvis, non-contrast, which showed infiltrates in her lung. And a COVID test was sent out, and the initial COVID test was negative. Uh, after that, she underwent a brief echocardiogram because of the abnormal troponins, and you know, we we're trying to do more non-invasive testing to save PPE. And what ended up happening was we did a, an echocardiogram and it showed a subtle wall motion abnormality in the mid-anterior wall. And the troponin was 0.4. At, uh, at this point, um, because of her symptoms, a second COVID test was sent out uh, because of suspicion for false negative testing on the initial one. And the second COVID test came out negative too. And you know, we were thinking of what other uh, non-invasive testing to do to avoid, you know, with a positive troponin regional wall motion, should you send this patient to cath? Should you do more non-invasive testing to avoid cath? What do you think, what are your thoughts on uh, in this situation? Yeah, so um, in, in, you know, normal times, uh, this is a patient that most likely with a wall motion abnormality and, a, you know, troponin elevation, would have gone for an invasive angiogram to look and see. One of the most likely reason would be a, uh, a, a coronary lesion that's causing um, a wall motion abnormality. Uh, however, you know, given the constellation of symptoms, including the CT findings of infiltrate in the lungs and some of these um, you know, nausea, vomiting uh, uh, symptoms uh, that the patient was having, kind of seems like there may have been a viral process going on in this patient. Um, of course, we, you know, in this particular time, we're most concerned about uh, COVID-19. And although the, there were a couple of uh, COVID tests that were sent out that were negative, uh, we know that there is a quite, quite a significant false negative rate with uh, these tests. Uh, and so I think um, it's very reasonable uh, to do some non-invasive testing um, uh, you know, prior to jumping to uh, an invasive procedure, which would uh, use a lot of PPE and also expose the healthcare workers to um, you know potential COVID patient in this situation. So um, you know, I, I think we move forward with some non-invasive testing to start with. Um, was we went with a, a cardiac MRI, um, a high suspicion in these patients, uh, not only COVID patients but also patients w with particular viral syndromes would be a, a, a viral myocarditis that may be causing this not only wall motion abnormality, but troponin elevation. Yeah, so we ended up doing the cardiac MRI as the first uh, test, and we, you can see here you, there is a regional wall motion abnormality involving the anterior wall and anterior septum, and it, the two-chamber view clearly shows mid-anterior wall is almost severely hypokinetic to akinetic. It's not thinned out. And uh, well, the T1 molly was prolonged. The T1 was very prolonged in this area. It was prolonged up to 1200 compared to the normal myocardium. And 
we measured the T2 in this area too and it was very prolonged up to 70 in the anterior, mid anterior wall and anterior septum and the rest of the myocardium you can see was not prolonged and here are the measured numbers. I think we had 68 and uh, 72 uh, mean values, 73 mean values and the turbospinaco also showed an, um, uh, brightness in the area of uh, anterior wall and anterior septum. Delayed enhancement did not show any um, myocardial scar uh, in, the, in, in this area, and which is, I think, kind of not unusual to find with uh, acute myocarditis kind of situation. Sometimes the delayed enhancement doesn't show a uh, scarring process uh, in this situation. So th these were the findings we had, and what are your thoughts based on the MRI? Yeah, so I mean, it's very interesting. Um, you know, without with the in the absence of scar there, uh, you know, it, it's it's not likely that she's infarcted that region, which is the thing that we most often think about when there's a regional wall motion abnormality. However, the prolonged T1 and T2 go along with some uh, increased water content or edema in the area. And so that can be a sign of marker of inflammation in the area, which is consistent with, you know, a, a myocarditis type picture, which is, um, you know, I think most likely what we're, um, you know, saying these findings are consistent with. Sure. You know, given the wall motion kind of in the LAD territory, there was still question mm -hmm. as to if there was coronary um, involvement, epicardial disease. So we actually were queer because of the troponin abnormality increase. So we ended up doing a CTA on the patient. And the CTA, CT coronary angiogram showed mild disease in the LAD and mild disease in the left circumflex and mild disease in the uh, RCA, um, which was not significant. And we basically uh, uh, attributed this to myocarditis Given these findings, a third COVID test actually was done on this patient and it came out negative too. Right. I think you know, you're living in the COVID situation, you're looking everything through a COVID lens right now, mm -hmm. but you know, still the normal viral myocarditis is out there and that's what she was diagnosed with uh, at that point. I can give you, she's two weeks out from this episode and she feels better clinically and she, um, has reported uh, uh, getting better and doing well right now.